to talk about one of the nice derivations that comes from our universal law of gravitation, and this is this idea of gravitational field strength. Uh, it's an idea that we have also referred to as the acceleration due to gravity, and we are actually able to use the universal law of grav in order to calculate the uh, acceleration due to gravity of any uh, massive object. So let's take a look at it. First and foremost, in order to explain how two bodies that are not in contact actually exert a force on another, I mean, that's a pretty amazing feat, uh, we use this concept of fields. And everybody here has seen a field in action before uh, if you've ever used a compass because the needle of a compass points towards our geographic north, but is it really pointing towards north? Well, no, it's actually pointing along the magnetic fields line, field lines along magnetic south. So uh, it's a pretty impressive feat nonetheless. And fields are really spheres of influence. They don't have this funny shape unless there is some sort of intervening idea uh, causing them to change shape. But otherwise, within the universe, spheres are, are the simplest uh, shape that they take. Uh, they are invisible and certainly intangible. Again, you don't feel the magnetic field. Uh, you can't see the magnetic field, but you certainly can see the effects of the magnetic field if you have something magnetic as well. So when we're dealing with an idea like a campfire, uh, we can think of this as having somewhat of a heat field. And the classic example would be if you get closer to the fire, uh, the stronger the field is going to become. How do you know that it's getting stronger? Because you actually feel the heat. Uh, it's stronger, but if you move away, obviously it starts to get cold, and you panic, and you get blankets, but really, moving towards the campfire, uh, the field becomes stronger. At the same time, if we need a larger field, uh, well, we just create a, lo a larger fire. Of course, obviously not during the summer this year, uh, because there's been campfire bans all year, but uh, the further away from a larger fire we have, uh, we'll be able to feel the field still. So smaller fire... Uh, we have to be closer to feel the same amount of heat as if we had a larger fire, we could actually get farther away. And this is the general principle of fields that applies to pretty much every type of field in physics. So with a gravitational field, um, we can use uh, the universal law of grav. You'll remember that F grav is just equal to G M M over R squared. And remember, I said that this large m is always going to be the larger object and the small m is going to be the smaller object. Well, what's going on over here is you'll also remember that we have defined the force of gravity as mg. That goes way back to Newton's second law, uh, where g is the acceleration due to gravity uh, of whatever planetoid you're on, and m is the mass of the object that is feeling this gravity. And that, again, is usually the smaller object. So if we divide out the m, well, look what happens. The small m here, small m there, they're going to cancel out, and you're going to end up with this equation right here. And if you take a look at the units of this, you're going to end up with units of newtons per kilogram or meters per second squared. Again, one of the practices I really want you to get into is this idea of unitary analysis. If we take a look at G, that's a newton meters squared per kilogram squared. Mass is just in kilograms. And R squared, well, that's meters squared. So what's going to cancel? All of those are going to cancel. A kilogram is going to cancel. You're going to end up with newtons per kilogram. Well, how does that get to meters per second? Well, remember that a newton is equal to a kilogram meters per second squared, which means the kilograms again will cancel, and you'll end up with meters per second squared. So unitary analysis is a nice way to verify that whatever derivation of an equation you've made, uh, you're ending up with the units that you expect to end up with. So expect to see it in either of these units, because either one is legitimate. So let's take a look at a couple examples here. Uh, number one says the Earth is not exactly a perfect sphere. Just like a spinning basketball, it's an oblate spheroid, or kind of bulgy in the middle. This is a cool thing, and here in Vancouver, you feel those effects greatly uh, with the idea of tides. Now, tides are caused by the moon, but it's this idea that it's actually stretching the middle of the Earth a little bit due to its interaction with the Earth. And because of that, as it orbits around the Earth, you actually start to see the water get pulled away. And then as it moves around, it goes back in. So uh, this oblate spheroid is not only caused by spin, but it's also caused uh, by the moon itself. So a wickedly cool uh, idea which causes tides. So let's say you want to calculate the acceleration due to gravity at the North Pole. Something interesting is because it's not a sphere, uh, the distance from the center of mass is going to change a little bit, so that means we're going to get slightly different accelerations due to gravity. So if we look at A, 
we know that g equals g m over r squared. And we plug in our values. Our mass of the Earth, as anybody remember, 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. And then we're going to divide by r, which is 6.37 times 10 to the 6 meters. And we're going to square that. And we should end up with a number of 9.83 meters per second squared. Well, that's interesting because up until now, we've only ever used 9.8. So, hmm, slightly different number. What about B? Well, B, we're saying we're at the equator. Now, again, we're basically on plane with the moon, which means the equator is going to be the spot where it bulges the most, as you can tell by the radius being slightly larger. So if we do the same calculation again, we're going to end up with 5.98 times 10 to the 24 divided by 6.386 times 10 to the 6 squared. Now you're going to end up with 9.78 meters per second squared. So you actually will feel a little lighter if you're at the equator than you will if you're at the North Pole. And the reason behind this is the change in shape and the distance away from the center of mass. So the number 9.8 in, in university, they use 9.81. Uh, that's just the average acceleration due to the gravity as we'd feel at sea level. So now you're aware. Let's take a look at another example. This one's a bit trickier, but not overly tricky. Uh, the moon is 385,000 kilometers away from the Earth's surface. What is the Earth's gravitational field strength at that distance? So if we were to draw the picture, we're saying here's the Earth, and here's the moon. And we're saying that from the Earth's surface to there, that's 385,000 kilometers. Well, we want to know what is Earth's gravitational field strength at that distance. Okay, well, problem is we have to include this little distance here, our value of r. So our, our total distance, we'll say rt, is equal to the radius of the Earth, which is 6.38 times 10 to the 6 meters, plus... 385,000 kilometers, but we have to change that to meters, and that's 3.85 times 10 to the 8 meters to give us a value of 3.91 times 10 to the 8 meters. That's really the only trick involved there, is that they're talking about it from the surface of the Earth. Now, does it matter that it doesn't go directly to the center of the moon? Well, no, they're just asking for the gravitational field strength, 385,000 kilometers away from the surface of the Earth. So they don't make any discussion about force gravity or anything like that. So uh, we're going to take this distance as exactly as it is. We don't need to include the radius of the moon. So uh, let's go. G is equal to GM over R squared, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times 5.98 times 10 to the 24. And that's going to be divided by 3.91 times 10 to the 8 squared to give us a final value of 0 0.003 meters per second squared. Which means that if we are at the moon, we actually do feel a slight acceleration from the Earth.